What's his last name? No. Scala I don't know. I guess Gina. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sally Bernard, an artist, author, and spiritual experiencer. Welcome to Call Me Zena, a true story into the spiritual realms. Join me as I sit and discuss the journey of self-discovery and awakening with the help of my spirit guides. It's time to trust your intuition. This is your inner knowings. Through questions and points of conversation, I can help others feel empowered. With the ability to touch people's past lives, I help others connect and not feel alone. Sit with me and call in live, 888-994-4995. Hi, good afternoon everybody. We have a great show lined up for you today. First of all, let me introduce Russ, who's been on my show many times, and we talk about aliens together. That's true. <laughs> and also, my friend, who's writing my movie for me and my book, Gino. Are you there, Gino? He's not logged in yet, so start with Russ. Oh, okay. So we're going to start with Russ. Hi, Russ. How are Fine. you? Fine. How are you today? Good. Fine. Thank you. Well, we have a great show. <laughs> so you've been on my show many times, once, Russ. So once, once before. Once before. I think it's a little more than once before, but okay, that's great. So we have some great things that have been happening in your life and in mine too, right? Okay. Visitations. And the universe. Am I able to say that? Right? And the universe. We've, <laughs> we've had visitations, okay? And I always we're in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely convinced mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So to start off our show, is there any question maybe that you'd like to tell the audience or to ask me something? Yeah, listen, lately there have been a lot of disruptions in the broad spectrum of the social, political climics of the world. Can you hear me? It was, I thought he called me. So, when we deal, what, what, what do we, how do we handle that? I'm sorry, because I was technical difficulties okay, here. I wasn't quite listening. No, but I said, lately, mm -hmm. the world has experienced a lot of conflict, yes, political, it right. social, right. economic, etc. Et right. It goes on and on and on. Why now? Why in the year 2023? What's going on? I truthfully, you know, I don't ever claim to have all the answers. Okay. And I, I do want to say that. But from my personal experience of what I hear, we're going through what we would call a transition of correction. That's the word I'm hearing from from where I hear from. from a, so with mm -hmm. that, I truly believe, and this is just my theory, that there are which we talk about many times, other people from other planets that are here with us, they're helping us, okay? We're going through a correction and we're meeting, so to speak, people that are giving us messages. And I, again, I don't believe anything is coincidental. And the fact that you're here and you also brought a friend of yours here, well, we all had a connection. And our connection is to do with what's going on in the world today. And I had a, a, a brief conversation with your friend who also mentioned to me, which I feel very strongly about, is spreading love. As long as we remain positive, and we're going through very difficult times right now, their message is to try to remain positive through this correction. Mm. We're seeing some horrible things, and nobody can say that, you know, this is the way it should be. But in order for us to accelerate, and I often talk about the fifth dimension, we're taken on a path that will lead us there. Now, it, that would be a whole new show to explain that. But as long as we can remain as best we can positive about these things that are happening, and it's very, very upsetting. Obviously, I turn on the news. We need to listen a little bit to the news, but put good vibrational energy out. They are contacting us to help us. Mm -hmm. I truly, truly believe mm -hmm. that. So it's des this was destined to happen then? I think it was. You know, right. as I had explained on my show many, many times, that our life is, we plan our life, okay. we plan what's happening. But on the other end of that, we do have free will. So a lot of free will is coming into this. So whilst we are guided, we also are guided in our own direction, if that makes sense mm -hmm. too. So 
I feel very fortunate that I've been able to contact many people through this because I'm just like anyone else. I'm a human in this world. I have my problems, but I try to listen. And I believe this show that I'm doing is what I'm meant to be doing today to help or guide people through this. Again, you know, I talk about I have no ego, but I think it's very important that we talk about this. I can't tell you that everything I say is correct. It's what I hear, but we need to move forward with positivity. Mm -hmm. So when I read Call Me Zena, yes. you stress that in Call Me Zena. You, st you stress that. I mean, yes. you, you emphasize that. I was told to call myself Zena through this whole process. Yeah, but I'm saying you stress the ability of us yes. having free will and to be positive. Absolutely. Always be positive, Absolutely. always be positive, always yes. be positive. I will never say anything different. Right. You know, we all have our problems. And I've often said that being in this world today is a learning process. Nobody, and I'm sure I'm correct, goes through this life without problems. Mm -hmm. But what now is happening is that the negativity of everything that could happen that is bad is happening. I mean, we switch on the news. It's so hard to take it all in. But if we can see a bright light at the end of the tunnel, let's try to pull this together. And with your friend who is sitting over there right now, and he mentioned that he was here for love. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Let's show love here. Mm -hmm. Love mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. So you also are saying that you have been incarnated more than once on this planet. Yes, as my viewers know, I, I believe for myself, I can only talk for me right now. Right. I've been here many, many times. Many There's times. a reason that I'm here right now. Why? I, I, I'm still learning. I'm still learning that, but being able to talk on the airwaves is nothing that I, I had intended to do. But I believe that now is my time to do this. For me personally, I feel that I need to come out with all my experiences to show people that there is so much more than what we just see that's going on, so to speak, behind the scenes. Okay. That's very important. So know. you're saying that you came with the ability to be intuitive and clairvoyant? Is that right? Would well, you... yes. I, I, again, you know, it's not just me. I believe no, that no, of many course. of us can do that. But uh -huh. I have tapped into something that I'm seeing now that's really important. Uh, how did you discover now. that? How did you discover that? Well, it? I discovered that 18 years ago. And my first inkling, so to speak, of what was happening to me as I was getting messages and I was flying all over the place. But even that I could have thought, well, maybe I'm imagining it. But they also told me to paint. And I have a lot of drawings today right and uh, i even just proved that to myself just a little while ago because i actually haven't painted for a while but every time i have a break my art seems to change and i just painted something two days ago that is so different from my actual art today and i knew that would happen i have no idea what i'm painting but it always comes out as something mm -hmm. how, how is it different if i may uh, well i'll show it on my show when i finish this oh, okay. but it's very different to okay. the drawings that From you see behind me or anywhere oh yeah. different than what we see very much so uh -huh. yes and i've often said to people i need to start painting again but my painting i have no idea what i'm going to draw will be different and it is mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it proved it. it for me it was validation too that i'm being led with my artwork right do you think that other entities are coming you were saying something about being at the third dimension that you think that this is a time that we are to advance to the fourth or fifth dimension do you yes. think and now that's not for everybody and i i have to stress that too i think we have we choose our time to be ready there is no time on the other side but when we hear we kind of i feel now more than what i did before i understood this that it's my time to to talk about this okay so yes we trans we go to other dimensions and right. i think now is the time for the ones that are ready not everybody is ready and it doesn't mean that they're what, lesser than people that what are happens ready. to those who are not ready well again i don't have all the answers oh, I see. but it will be okay i need to say it will be okay it's just like when you're in school and you go to first well i was from london so it was first class second class third class you have to, you can only move up when you, so to speak, pass the exams. Same thing here. You will move, this is what they're telling me. You will move up when you're ready. It doesn't mean that you're not, that you're not going to get this, but you have to be ready to get it. 
I mean, I hope I'm there. I can't tell you that I have all the answers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So when a person moves to the fourth or the fifth or the sixth dimension, what will be a significant change in that person? Well, for myself, and I can only talk for me, what okay. happened to me, I suddenly became far more aware of everything that was going on. I realized there was no coincidences, and I got validated all along the way. It can happen, it's not just me. It, this can happen mm -hmm. to anybody. Mm -hmm. But I realized there was so much more than what I was seeing around me in this life. I realized, I went through a lot, a lot. And I think that's part of our, so to speak, journey to, you know, everything isn't plain sailing, so to speak. And the harder our life is, sometimes we actually see more sometimes because we're ready to listen, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the people who may think differently, as you did years ago, before you understood that you were to be a spokesperson for, for at this time, this place. Right, right. What would you tell them when they feel differently? And go with it. That's all the message that I'm going. Go with it. If you feel different, it's not really. Mm -hmm. It's like we're being given messages. No, if you're not ready, you won't even feel that. But when you're ready, I truly believe that you need to go with it and talk to people just like myself. I'm always ready to hear some, what someone has to say to me. And you gradually go through this process. I'm going to take a break just for a minute to make sure that Gino is still on the Oh, line. okay, okay. Is he available? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Russ, I don't mean to cut no, you off. No, no, go right ahead. Any time to be on my show, but I've waited a long time for this Absolutely. interview with Gino. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. Gino, are you there? I am. Okay, just if you actually would like to even introduce yourself, Gino, and tell them a little bit about you and how you're working with me on the book and the movie. All I'm putting right. you on the um, spot. <laughs> can, okay. You can hear me, right? I can hear you perfectly. Everything okay. is ready for you to talk. All right. Um, again, my name is Gino Scala. I am a screenwriter by trade, uh, executive producer. Um, I was the executive director of the 1999 Academy Awards as well as uh, Soul Train, the Saturn Awards, Blockbuster Videos, and so forth. So the award show was kind of my genre. And uh, through, through a series of connections and, and so forth, I've worked with the studios in the past. And recently, as uh, com comparative to my age, I started later in life in in writing screenplays so i did very well there and since then i've been um, uh, available for hire to ghostwrite stories and uh, uh, adapt novels into screenplays and that's how you came to me when uh, you told me your story and whether you asked whether or not it would uh, movie worthy and quite frankly I was stunned by the story I believe every word of it and you are such an uh, uh, amazing person individually that I, I you know I believed everything you say and still do you made a believer out of me let's put it that way and uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic story to tell the world. Um, now, you started with a book. I, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a, it's the old version of Call Me Z. And the, um, uh, so we started with a screenplay based on that book, but the book wasn't really designed as your, uh, right. or it wasn't a very well-written autobiography let's put it that way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh so you 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 hired an interviewer a person to to write your bio and um unfortunately you know we all know who lynn was and um uh his sudden passing has you know 
put a longer delay on this project but this project started three years this is a four to six month project that's taking it's going into its third year so that that's where we're at this is our first time talking over video so thank you very thank you Gina I'm glad that you're on my show today and and also to talk about call me Zeno the movie is also going to be we're gonna as a ghostwriter we're gonna keep it as call me Zeno correct I think that's how people are beginning to know me having done this show for many months is that is that the case I I think so but you know what I have absolute faith in you so however you want to if you want to change it we'll put it on the air and we'll change it but it's happy I'm happy to actually talk face to face with you for the first time many people in your audience know your story right and they know the story about Aldo right and how important he was mm-hmm. as your God and I you know I, I think that's the angle we're going to tackle when when writing the screenplay but um, as whether or not your audience knows now that I I have the transcripts of all the 17 hours of interviews or could have been 34 hours of interviews. I don't know. But these are notes that Lynn made and did not have the chance, unfortunately, to to write out the novel. So we're going to do both the novel and the screenplay, which is a massive job. Right. But um, it's it's just such a great story and um, you know you have a huge following because of it Uh, initially I thought the story was how you woke up in the hospital (laughs) learning how to draw that to me blew me away because I see the artwork there behind you and I've seen all your prints and they're they're beautiful thank you I don't think someone with, without an ounce of training in drawing or art or anything, and I think you told me before you went to the hospital that time, you couldn't draw a straight line. That's correct. And uh, and then the first thing you did was grab a napkin or something and, and draw uh, in, in ink, no less, mm-hmm. a beautiful drawing and kind of stunned the nurses mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's really you know that that now i know you had incidences much early in life as early as seven maybe even before that but what drew me first to this was the artwork and having known you now and learned more about you i mean tell tell the story of of me writing the first draft where I came up with the um, the housekeepers. Do you remember that story? Yes, I absolutely do, Gina. I remember that. And I was so taken by it from your first, the first, par- actually the first chapter of the book. I mean, a lot has changed since then because it's like two, maybe two years ago today that we read that. Right. But no, I was amazed. I knew you were the right person for this project. Absolutely, 100%. And you know what? I'm going to sneeze. I always sneeze on my show. Oh, my gosh. (coughs) Gino, are you there? I do this (coughs) when I get validation. If you've been listening to my shows, you know this storm. I sneeze. That's the validation. You are the right person. I sneeze. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Everybody here can... You know this, right? I sneezed. There's no reason why I should have sneezed. You are definitely, well, we're on the right track. <laughs> well, let me let me finish that story, right. if, I, if you don't mind. No. The um, uh, part, part of writing a screenplay is you have to make a movie viable. So it can't be an exact adaption or adaptation of the novel. You have to create some scenes and, you know, connect scenes that aren't connected in real life. So I, I 
attribute about 70% truth, 30% poetic license in creating this story. Now, when I was doing the screenplay the first time, the, uh, the, I drew, uh, I, I wrote a scene at your home where you had two Hispanic uh, housekeepers. And I did that for a reason because I wanted them to notice your, your artwork and then ask about it. And, and that's how we were gonna go get into your whole story. And I named, the, they were mother daughters. And I believe the mother's name was Maria. Hmm. Yeah, that's not very original, but that's what I came up with. And when you read that, or when we discussed it, you told me that you had two housekeepers, mother, daughter, that's one right. named Maria. That's absolutely and, right, yes. And I I did not know any of that. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I didn't know you, you know, could afford housekeepers or you have a, right. or have a mother daughter no less but to me that that <laughs> that sealed the deal for me but not only that gino to just carry on with that what you're just saying to me my my cleaning lady i call it my house i love her her name is maria and she started to bring her daughter into the home to help her i have her you right. know periodically through the month and her daughter is with her all the time I didn't even know that at that time. She brings her daughter with her every time. And this has been going on now for two and a half years or however long it is since we first met. Wow. So that is validation, absolutely. And if, for people that are following me on this program, I have, so for myself, I mean, I'm human. <laughs> I also, I'm the first person to do that ah moment. Oh my gosh. But it happens so many times as you've witnessed too over the years too, Gino. And I'm so glad yeah. now that you are back, that we are involved now to continue with both the screenplay and the book. I believe you were meant, I mean, unfortunately Lynn, Lynn did pass away, but for anybody to take over from where he left off, it was definitely for you to do that. I feel that very strongly today. Good, good. I'm more than happy to do it. Sally, can I ask you? Sure. How was he going to bring this whole story forward into the movie ass, the movie viewers? What time? I mean, you say three months. I, that would be amazing after it's all written. But how do you foresee bringing Sally's story forward? That's really directed for you, Gino, I think. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Um, you mean as a script or uh, actually getting it made? How far do you take the process? I'll take it as far as it goes until, uh, you know, it sells or I find, find the right team to, to produce it. So then you start with the script and then you just see we, how far it can go, whether someone will buy it, someone takes it over to make the whole movie. Yes, there's a, there's a, I have a stair step that I use of uh, how to get it to that place. Um, you know, it's selling a screenplay, it's a one in a hundred thousand, maybe one in a million. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's not, it's not, the, even with my connection, you know, everything has to line up as Sally can tell you. Uh, you know, uh, uh, screenplay that was idea that was hot a few years ago is no longer hot, and and so forth. Um, but these type of stories, I think there's always an audience for, it. and as a result, I think you've got an excellent chance. Now, you know, I'm a fairly decent writer, and I have. Uh, Tremendous amount of connections, obviously, with my background, um, and you know, I, I, I believe if we, you know, if we can get other believers, in, and that's what I call them, that's what I consider them, because you know, I've always believed in, in other life and, and things of that nature, but as I've grown older, I've gotten more. Um, cynical about extra power, things of that nature. 
So I was going to ask because I wanted to ask you. Do you know, I'm, I'm so yeah. fascinated by oh my gosh, everything that you've done as the executive director and all these movies and these accolades and awards. You could do any movie. You could produce anything you wanted to, or you could choose to probably not produce and just say, you know what, I'm done. I've done what I had to do in this industry. What is it about Sally and her story? that still intrigues you? Even now, now you may be a little bit of a naysayer, I don't know. What intrigues you about her story? Oh, I'm not a naysayer at all. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm on the Sally train. We're all on the Sally train. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, what, what is it that you say, what, you know what, I've done so many, I mean, you've, done, you've done things that people could only dream to achieve in a career. And then here you sit with Sally to say, you know, what? I want to bring your story to fruition. What a gift this is. I think what sets her apart from other people within the realm is whatever you want to call it, uh, alien world or whatever powers they, they're all kind of showy, you know, they're kind of Las Vegas about it. Dionne Warwick, and, you know, all these people with, and, and we all know the frauds. In the, there are so many frauds in this business. No one, but no one who's ever met Sally or talked to her could claim that she's fraudulent. It's true. That's, it's just not even conceivable. Okay? She, she is so brutally honest about this. She didn't tell anybody for years of her abilities or experiences. I mean, and, and now that she come out, and as far as I know, it's only been within the last 10 years or so that she's really talked about. And I could be wrong, Sally. I'm no, afraid. you are correct. I feel funny just listening to this. But what are you you're... hoping that Gino portrays of your story? Because at some point, your movie is going to be your legacy. And, and thankfully, you found Gino, right, to take all of this. You have a full team of people that have brought this to fruition. What are you hoping that I'm, this movie brings I'm about? I'm just hoping it won't take too long. I'm getting up there in <laughs> age, okay? And I won't be I can come back to you as I've now witnessed from other people, but let's get it out there, Gino, before yeah, it's yeah, too yeah, late yeah, for it, me anyway. That's basic. And, and I, I want to I want to want to uh, go back to that point because again, we started in 21 and uh, along the way we decided that the book wasn't sufficient enough for, you know, to write a close to reality screenplay. Um, and I had an idea, I had an idea, it wasn't something you were particularly crazy about. And at that point, you felt it was necessary because I couldn't come down there mm -hmm. to interview you. Um, and you hired Lynn to write the book. And and that delayed things. We we also had, you know, your your daughter passing, which was uh, uh, took took you out for a long time. Mm -hmm. Then you got married and you traveled. So there there were things that delayed this. And uh, but now it's all on my it's all on me. I have all the interviews, I have all the transcripts, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm more excited about doing it than most others. I am so too. Exciting. As you know, I, have, I mentioned that Gino is now doing this, and I, I, it's just, I, I'm, yeah, I am humble. I try not to have too much ego. But I really do believe that now is the time. These little obstacles and things, unfortunately, yes, I did lose my daughter and my mind was not there at that point. But I, I've had an amazing year in this studio with everybody and the people that I've met. And I'm so glad now that you are part of that too, Gino, and that I've introduced you to him too, because I feel 
he disappeared. Is he there? <laughs> Let's bring Juno okay. back. Okay. That if we all can work together to get this out, I think it's really important today. Very How's important. this? You guys have never met, right? Video chatted before? We have, we have not. We have talked on the phone extensively. Wow. But, uh, never um, actually met. Now we'll, you're meeting we'll Dawn there too. The, uh, the movie premiere. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh exactly. I hope we get to watch you all on the red carpet. Yeah, you yeah. and Gino walking on the red carpet would be amazing. <laughs> uh, can you can you even think of a movie that in you know in your lifetime that was made about someone with these kind of power or experience? But I came I to you. I came to you for a reason. I mean, I didn't know you, and yet I picked you out and you were more than happy. I know it took just to backtrack for when we first communicated, maybe a half an hour to get back to me, which was amazing because I didn't expect to hear from you. And then your words were to me, which Aldo was still around at that time because he hasn't been gone that long. And you said, I believe in you, you sound so genuine. And I never forgot those words, Gino. It meant a lot to me. I know we haven't discussed that much, but I knew right. you were the right person to do this. And yes, we've had our ups and downs over this last few years, but you know, now is the time to do it. Absolutely. There's reasons. I say there's no coincidences and I don't believe there is. So I think- And being a, being a former cop and detective, <laughs> uh, we don't believe in coincidences either. Right, right. That's How did the, you go from all of that? How were you a former cop and detective to being an executive director to script writer, screenwriter? Can you give us some background? Because this is amazing. I put my gun to many heads. <laughs> um, no, I got into investigation, uh, opened up two offices, one in, one in California. Uh, did a lot of connections in the Hollywood world. They are, uh, at that time, it was right around when Rebecca was killed. So we had a lot of uh, the stalking law became, you know, came into play. And um, I, I was at a lot of Hollywood functions. And, uh, and eventually, and then I worked in studios mostly in the finance area. And I uh, got a call that uh, they hired four executive directors and uh, I was one of them. Wow. Former chief of police, but the other one and two other, two other men. And this was 1999, 9-11, the year before. So it was a lot, a lot more freedom on the on the red carpet. Now it's a lot different. In fact, it's at a different location altogether. We were at the Shrine Auditorium, and that that the uh, Kodak. So uh, it, it's a heck of a journey. That's for sure. Well, I'm so excited. I know you need to take a commercial break. Yes. Okay. Stay around, Gino. Though. Okay. Thank you. We'll be back in a few minutes. Bye-bye for a few minutes. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. This world, this life, this illusion. What is going on, we ask? What is happening? Why not take time and see what is happening? This world as we know it, it seems so real and yet so far away from where we've come. Corruption, greed, anger, power, revenge. Please wake up. We can change what is around us, how we may ask. Learn to go back to where we were. Then we will have the clues. Then we can change and go forward. Please take the time. Do not fall into the game which we have put upon ourselves. We can change. We can make a difference. We have the power, each and every one of us. Go in peace. Go with love. Go as one. Zena. A true story, Call Me Xena, is the telling of Sally Bernard. Born in London, England at the end of the Second World War, she came to the U.S. in 1979. A mother of two and grandmother of four, she settled in Florida and worked in real estate. 
While going through a difficult time in her life, she was admitted into a hospital overnight in December of 2005. While settling back into her life, she began having vivid dreams and documenting them. By the third dream, a lady gave her a message to draw. With no artistic background or interest in art or history, Sally listened to her dreams and grabbed paper and crayons. Today, she has over 150 pieces of inspiring art and poetry. This book follows her journey and interpretations of these messages. She describes in detail how she's able to astral project and who she has met along her travels, including her spirit guides. This book will show you how anything is possible with an open mind. These events have changed Sally's life's direction, and this book will show you how to change yours. Purchase Call Me Xena on Amazon today. You have been watching Call Me Xena with your host, Sally Bernard. As an artist, author, and spiritual experiencer, know that you could always seek me out for resources. Visit artbysallybernard.com today. Now, back to the show. Hi, Gino, hopefully you're still there. Hello? I'm still here. Good, good. I have Russ here too. He's just come to join me. He's intrigued by the whole thing. Hi, Russ. I don't believe anything is coincidental, so here he's meant to be sitting here right next to me. We have both been abducted. I know that was a new part of the story, Gino, from what I had started, but my first book, when I had talked about my travels, I just thought I was talking about astral projection. But since then, I have met Russ, who I've now become friendly with over the last six or seven months. And I realized today, and we can introduce this maybe to my story, which you may not have been too aware of, that I was abducted yeah. many, many times. But this is new to you. <laughs> We're giving you an awful <laughs> lot to write about, right? But some of my travels that are in the book that you have sitting there are from the fact that I was, I was actually visiting other planets. To me, this was very strange, but it suddenly all became clear to me that I was being taken, as you know from the book, with people to other planets. So I would call that abduction of some kind. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But here is Russ, who has his own show written on lights in the sky. And we met. Lights just in the night. Lights in the night. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm That's saying right. lights and lights in the night. Who has actually kind of explained to me a little bit about these abductions? I don't believe any of this is coincidental. So I'm so happy that you're on this show, and I'd love you to talk a little bit more because it's a great opportunity for our viewers to get to know you a little bit. Okay. Oh, I, we have someone calling in. Oh, it's Steve. Can you tell the audience why you chose to put your projects on hold? Oh, can you, I can't read, I, got, I got you. Gino, can you tell the audience why you choose to put other projects, projects on hold to do this one? Oh, that's a great question, which you had written to Steve, my husband, about. Right. Uh, well, obviously, because it really started three years, but not, I, I always guarantee a four to six month finish. Um, and we were we were on pace to do that when certain things happened. And uh, mm -hmm. but now again, he, you nor I nor Steve are getting any younger, and, and I want to do this while we can all enjoy it. So uh, clearly, you're at the head of the line. Anyway, but I tend to do two or three projects simultaneously. And, you know, four or five hours each, whatever the need is. And I have about six or seven projects right now, but this is, this, you know, has my full commitment. So um, I'm not dividing my time uh, on this project. Thank you. I, I yeah, hope to, I hope to have well, at least the screenplay done by um, February and uh, the book soon after that. Great. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's been okay. a while. And as you had mentioned before, many th situations had showed themselves that we couldn't move forward as quickly as we were meant to. 
But again, I'm going to say I don't believe in any coincidences. And I think that now, from what I hear and what I, you know, I, my collective calls, I know you've been listening to my shows, you know about my collective. They're telling me now mm -hmm. is the time. And we will finish this and we will talk about it. This is just the first of many interviews that I hope we have, Gino. I'm happy that you're Good. on my show today. And, and also, I don't, again, I don't believe that this is coincidence that Russ is talking to me at, at, and came into the studio today about the abduction part of it, which we'll talk more about. But as you can go into my first book, you can see how that evolved into something a little more than just astral projection, which I knew nothing about at that time either. In fact, when we first spoke, I couldn't really explain completely what was happening to me, as you're aware of. Right. You remember our first few communications together on the telephone. It, I, I couldn't understand it. And Aldo was still around at that time. And my viewers are very aware who Aldo is. And then, of course, as we know, he passed. But he's still giving us, he's giving us all messages today. And Lynn now, too. Well, I, I see Russ uh, goes to the same barber I go to. Uh, what, what same saying? barber you go no, I do yeah, that's why I took my hat off I wanted to have that, <laughs> that connection between us so. but, but listen have you done much on alien alien abductions the Pentagon release all that stuff that's coming to the fore have you done any research on that or ob observed I, any I, of that I read all of that oh you do I haven't, uh, yeah oh yeah oh I'm a I'm a I'm been a um what do you think is going? I've been what, an uh, alien all my life. This, this whole this this disclosure project. Uh, that what do you think it's going? Where do you think it's going to end up? As we, well, you're putting him on the spot a little no, bit. No, no, huh? no, no, no. He, he said he reads on it. He he knows more than we do. Go right do here. You uh, by the disclosure project, you mean releasing the information we have? The government. Yes. Um. I well, they've they somewhat parsing their words. They've somewhat uh, validated the fact that there are alien. Uh, alien there is alien. Um, I I don't know how far they've actually gone to say it, but uh, I I I I still think they're going to keep much of the information from right. the public just right. just to you know be on the safe side right um you know it's, it's funny i just just the other day i watched uh, independence day again sure and uh I, that must be in the 10th time but it's been a while and you know it, it's i i think that day is coming and it that frightens me Right. I, I I know I know Sally talks about maybe you do as well about aliens being on the friendly basis, you right. know. Yet how only portray them except for ET? They only portray them as enemy. Right. I, I actually and, feel from not to interrupt you, but just to pick up from what you had just said. The majority of what I have, if you go, you know, I even forget what I'd written out. I remember everything that happened to me in my book. Right. I never, ever, now that I know that I was abducted many times, and it took a while for me, obviously, to come out with that, that I never had a bad encounter with them. To me, if you ask me that the majority of aliens today, from what I know, and this is just my personal opinion, is that they were all very, very friendly and wanting me to know more. Now, you hear other stories, I understand that too. I have never, ever encountered that. But right. then I'm just one of many people, but I feel that they are basically friendly. I, I, think, I, I think I'm looking at it more from a, a human perspective, where we can even get along with people on the other side of the fence, right. or the other side of the country. Or the other side of the world, I mean, we have groups of people destroying populations. Right, that's been going on in history, and as long as that anger, hatred exists, I, someone coming from another planet, they're going to be attacked by us. 
Mm -hmm. But I, I, mm -hmm. my theory mm -hmm. on this is that they are, and I've always said this even before I came out with what had really happened to me, it's just that I was getting messages, is that they are here to help us because we are all in this together. Can I prove this? No, but from what I hear, because if we, so to speak, mess up, it'll also affect other planets. I'm hearing that very strongly from my messages that I get. So they hear, as long as they can help us, they are also helping themselves, if that makes sense. I, I had no idea I was even going to talk about this, but I feel yeah. that very strongly, if that makes sense. You know, well, I'm not... If you Hollywood perspective, right. yeah. the, the alien comes down to help us, that's their goal, because we're destroying Mother Earth, and the planet is now ours, it's everybody's. And what happens? We take the first shot. We shoot them. It's happened in War of the Worlds. It happened in uh, well, Independence Day. Uh, you know, you just name the alien movie, and we as humans always take the first shot. And so maybe we'll change this perspective from my point of view, and we can add this a little bit to the movie to put a different perspective on it too, that maybe there are, I'm not saying all of them are friendly. I'm not saying we even do that. I don't know, Gina. Of course, we'll have many more conversations on that. But I think I'd like to portray that. Then they're not all bad. Yes, yes. That's, that, that would be a goal if we can change that mindset that the public has right that right. A, you know aliens are not here to us but to help us mm -hmm. but what is your thought on actual aliens being human-like and walking the planet now well from what i understand and from what i hear there are aliens walking on our on our planet today they look like us there may be some things that are a little different but you know i have listened and especially listening to russ too who who has his home program on this that they are walking amongst us we wouldn't necessarily know who they are but i'm sure that i i believe today that i have come in contact with a few on this planet obviously off planet because i took my travels but russ has been very good at, at explaining a lot of this to me i don't you know, I don't believe in coincidences. Everybody is where they're meant to be at the right time as you're sitting here on my show and we're talking to you. I don't know whether we're going to put this into the script, but I think it, it may or may not be the right time to do it right now. Before, actually, I believe there will be disclosure, but it will be what they call now, I understand, a soft disclosure. It won't be that we can absolutely prove anything, but it will be soft with my story, how I've met people. And it kind of leaves it more into the imagination of people till they begin to understand this a little bit, if that makes sense. I think that might yeah, be that, something to talk about. We we knew all along that, that pilots were new. And, you know, we heard the same old stuff, weather balloons and whatever, test vehicles from us and, and things of that nature. And um, no one really bought that. So right. that was the first relief. That was where they admitted, yes, we have some unidentified flying things out there. And it's, it wasn't a big shock to anybody because we right. all knew they were lying. Right. Now, I want to ask Russ a question. Russ, did you have a, an Aldo of your own? Did I have, sorry, what, what was that question? Did you have a guide? Did you have an Aldo? You have an Aldo. Like Sally. He does. I know, I know some people. He's very okay. quiet and very shy. No, no, no. But let, about the subject, let, let right? Me, let me ask. Go no. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Any other oh, I, I didn't know if you had a guide like she had. And the way he came into her life is amazing. Yeah. Um, so you have, do you have, it sounds like you more than one guy. I know some people, hey, but listen, and I do a lot of reading. I mean, and you've seen the War of the Worlds, Orson Welles back in 1938, right? That's what you were referring to. Yeah. You saw Independence Day, right? Have you seen uh, Steven Spielberg's uh, Taken, that 13-hour miniseries that he did? Have you seen that one? 
Steven Spielberg, he did a miniseries about 15 years ago called Taken for television. It was 13 hours. But the people who want to see that, they can Google it or they can just go to Amazon and get the whole box and, and watch the 13 hours. But my sources and the people tell me that 98% of that information in that Taken motion picture is true. Now, somehow when you look at what, be it uh, uh, E.T., The Men in Black, and all the other pictures that he has done, obviously he's getting some information from some sources about the reality of what's going on on the planet in terms of alien presence. So he just didn't make all that up. He got some information from some inside sources. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Spielberg is one of my heroes and and uh, highly respected man. Sure. Probably the highest. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I could see how the information that he got. From, he's obviously a believer. Of course. He did uh, that other, uh, uh, with Richard Dreyfus. I think of it now. Um, but that was his as well. Uh, close Encounters. Yeah, Close Encounters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. A little so frightening for some. Friend. That was a little frightening for some people. Did you, did you ever see Fire in the Sky? Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's a true story about Travis Walton, if you will. Right. right. So there are many, the fourth kind, which is a little scary for some people, was done, done in Nome, Alaska. So there are many portrayals of what's happening in the, in, as, as we go forward to uh, right. full right. disclosure. Yeah, many things. How do you see things in terms of when you do the motion picture with Sally, how do you think the public will react to what you were doing with her and the way you were portrayed? Well, because, like you, um, the others were a little bit more violent and um, uh, mostly male-oriented. Right. Think about the the leads in those pictures. Uh, here we have a you know a very attractive woman right. who has nothing to gain by this. She's not she's not marketing this for sure. her. Um, again, for many many years, she to, to a very small group of people. So you know. I think that's the first place you look. Okay. The fact that she's an everyday woman. Mm -hmm. She's your next neighbor. She's your aunt. She's your grandmother. She's your best friend. She's your co-employee. She fits all of those molds. And um, I just think it makes it that more believable. And where other people who experience these experiences that are maybe afraid to open up about it, I think we're going to see thousands of more stories than we've okay. heard to this point. Since I've met Sally, I've met many other people wow. with similar backgrounds. Is that right? Wow. That must be interesting. Yeah. I never knew the phrase astro or astro projection. And yet, you know, and then I suddenly talked to a, a number of people that they have that experience. When a, Sally and I first announced our collaboration. I put it out there. Right. And you know, people contacted me. It's like, this is amazing. Wow. <laughs> Again, people like her that I would absolutely believe. You know, I have so no reason to doubt. You have to understand, I'm very cynical. Oh, okay. You okay. Know, okay. You know, enforcement and, and police investigations, and criminal investigations of all kinds makes you very cynical about your fellow man and people's goodwill and their good intentions. And there aren't many that I can And she is by far, you know, the most wholesome. Sounds like you will soon be inundated with um, a lot of people coming to you with their stories. <laughs> But it works that way, Gino, and as they can say, as Dawn and Freddie will tell you this, since I've been here now well over a year doing an hour show every Monday, as you know, 
the amount of people that have shown up in the studio with the same thought process as what has happened to me has happened to them and they're walking into the studio here. I never knew this place a year and a half ago, but as Dawn can tell you, are you still there, Dawn? Yes, she's still there. Yeah, so many people, as you can attest to, right, that have shared this same, similar, not exactly as mine, but have right. had the same type of experience that I've had. I've met them all here. It's like our meeting place. It's incredible, Dawn, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, uh, and you've experienced that, how I met Russ. It was in the studio that I met Russ about four, got to be four or five months ago Something now, like right? Uh -huh. Just walked in when I was actually with Lynn doing my book and Russ shows up. Unfortunately, Lynn isn't with us anymore, but um, it was just, we had so much in common and I knew it was my time to talk about what actually happened to me with my experience of being abducted. I realized I needed to open up to that. Aldo, actually, just to let you know this, had said to me there'll be something more before he passed that he hadn't told me. It was just that. I know that today. I did not know that. And I think I'm being given the sign by dawn that we have two more minutes. But it was great to have you on my show, Gino. Well, Don't be a stranger, and we'll have you many times again. Okay. Yeah, Russ, it was a pleasure. Us. But no, it's, it's my honor to talk to you, sir. Yeah, great. And wish you the best of luck in everything you do. And fly thank down to much. Florida thank and you, be sir. with us, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And we'll talk soon. Okay, that was a great show, Russ. Right, uh, yeah. I'm glad yeah. you walked into the studio today. Again. <laughs> and we'll see you this time next week. Bye, everybody, for now. Okay, okay. thanks a lot. Coincidence or not, it's time to trust your intuition and knowings. Thank you for joining me through this journey of self-discovery and awakening with the help of my spirit guides. I'm Sally Bernard, and you can find my book, artwork, and contact through artbysallybernard.com. Join us next week. This has been Call Me Zena.